Number 22. What is the final velocity of a hoop that rolls without slipping down a five meter high hill starting from rest? All right, so here I have a little picture, right? The hill here is gonna be five meters high. The initial velocity of this rotating hoop is going to be zero, and it's going to obtain some final velocity, and that's what we're asked to find. Now, first thing is we have to define this pretty well. What does it mean by final velocity? Because you might say, well, there's angular velocity and there's tangential velocity, there's linear velocity, you know, what's going on? So they would have specified if they wanted angular velocity. All right, if they just use the term final velocity, they're just looking for the linear velocity um, or AKA tangential velocity. Now, remember in the other problems that we've done, when we, let's say, had a car, let's say the car was moving, you know, uh, let's say th this is the car's wheel and the car's wheel was moving with a, or the car itself was moving with a velocity of, I don't know, two meters per second. Remember that if I knew the, radius of the tire, I can then take this information, meaning the linear velocity, the radius, and translate that into an angular velocity. Remember this formula, Vt is equal to r omega. And this says that the uh, tangential velocity is equal to the radius of the rotating body multiplied by that body's angular velocity. So, the key here, right, this was R. The key in a problem like this was realizing, and we've discussed this in the past, that the linear velocity of the car is equal to the tangential velocity of any point on the tire located at a distance of R, okay, away from that axis of rotation. So that being the case, okay, now that's an important concept for this problem. That being the case, we know that linear Velocity is really the same thing as tangential velocity of the rotating body. Okay, keep that in mind. So basically, we have this thing. This this uh, I'll write it over here on the. Uh, I'll just write it in the middle. That v t is equal to v. Okay, I can write a little l there for linear if you like, but just leave it like that. Now, okay. I was going to ask, are there any questions, but I, I, I won't get a response. I mean, I can get a response, but just not, uh, not in uh, real time. So what we have to now consider is the easiest way to do this problem is through energy considerations, all right? Now, remember, energy isn't created or destroyed. It's just transferred. That being the case, from that statement, we can make this mathematical statement that the initial amount of energy better equal the final amount of energy, Okay. Nothing is lost to friction in this problem because it says without slipping or anything like that. So there is, well, there is friction because this is going to grab the, the um, it's going to grab the, what, whatever the, the, this hill is made out of. Um, but it, it's not going to, uh, we're not going to slip down and therefore lose it as heat or anything like that. I mean, there already is some heat being generated. You know that from just driving your car, your tires get hot as you drive. Uh, although your tire is not slipping all over the place. So why is it getting hot? It's due to friction. So, I mean, th this is a simplification, okay? All of these, almost all these problems require simplifications. Otherwise, the problems become very, very difficult. And if you go on to higher physics, you'll be doing stuff like that. But right now, let's assume there is no friction in the problem at all. So all of the initial energy gets converted to final energy, okay? Now, what type of energies are in the problem? Well, we have potential energy, Okay, how did I know? Well, we're starting with this disc at a certain height relative to the ground, and it's going to end at a certain height relative to the ground. And I noticed that that height changed. And therefore, there was a change in potential energy, right, of due to gravity, because that, that's the definition, right? Gravitational potential energy is mg delta h. So, that being the case, I'm going to now write potential energy in here. Okay, initial. I know there's potential energy in the problem, so let me write it on both sides. And potential energy, final, okay? I know it's not gonna have a final value, but I'm gonna put it in anyway, because the height is zero here relative to the ground. Then there is also linear kinetic energy, right? This disk is moving linearly. It's translated linearly down the slope. Okay, so this wheel, as you, if you were to picture it, will move just like this on down. 
Okay, so I know that it's also going to have a linear, I'll put a little L here for linear, okay? A linear or translational is really a better term, uh, but whatever. So I know it's going to have an initial value and a final value as well. And I also know that this disc will be rotating as it goes down, right? The wheel is going to rotate. Bum, 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 bum. So I also know that it's going to have, and I should give myself a little more space. I also know that it's going to have an initial kinetic energy of rotation. And I also know that it'll have some final value for rotation. Okay, so this should basically sum up everything. Remember, the total energy has to e initially has to equal the total energy, and there should be, that should be an F. Uh, finally, there are three types of energy in the problem. So all of their initial components better equal all the, the sum of all of their initial components better equal the sum of all of their final components. Okay. All right, now, uh, let's just start canceling some things that we can just to make this a little easier. All right, we know that they're, they're, the disk is not rotating or moving at all initially. So the initial translational or linear kinetic energy and the initial rotational kinetic energy go bye-bye because they're zero. We also know that the potential energy at the end, since it reached the ground, is also zero. So that goes bye-bye. So now we have a nice, now we can simplify this a little more, right? So potential energy initially has to equal then the kinetic energy, the linear or translational kinetic energy final, plus then the kinetic energy of rotation final. All right, why don't we expand on these terms now? So we know that this is gonna be MGH, okay, the initial height, which we know was five, um, equal then the translational kinetic energy, remember, is one half MV squared, and this is, you know, the linear velocity, okay, plus then one half I omega squared. Now, you might say, well, isn't there a problem here? I don't know. I'm asked to find the final velocity. That's basically what this is. This, I could put a little F down there. Actually, I probably should, okay? Put an F on underneath both. I'm asked to find this, but they didn't give me rotational you know, uh, velocity. They didn't give me angular velocity. So where do I go? That's the whole key of this statement, okay? that the basically linear, excuse me, that the um, translational, or the, what am I saying? I, T, T's are all over the place, translational, tangential, that the tangential velocity of this rotating body is equal to the linear velocity, okay? Now remember, we also had this equation up here and it told us it gave us the relationship between the translational, uh, <laughs> the tangential, my God. Tangential velocity is equal to then. I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can empathize with right. Imagine talking this all out with all these terms all over the place, just letters. Um, so here we have equal to the uh, radius of rotation multiplied by the angular uh, velocity. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to substitute this on in for vt. Okay. So now this formula would become r omega is equal to v. And now this is the key critical relationship that I need. Because basically what I'm gonna do now is I realize that omega is related to translational velocity by this, right? All I did was solve this thing for omega. So now what I can do is I can take this, remember this is right here, this is linear velocity, this is just V. I'm gonna take this result and now plug this on in for omega down here. Okay, now let's see what we get. So now it's MGH I. MGH I is equal to one half MVF squared plus then, and by the way, if this is the final, you know, going up to here, if this is the final, you know, angular velocity, then this is the final linear velocity. Okay, so that will then be plus uh, one half I omega f, which is what we just defined, vf over r, and this whole thing is squared, okay? Now, hopefully that makes sense so far. Now what I'm gonna do is I realize that, hey, I have this moment of inertia thing, and I don't know the moment of inertia, so I'm gonna try to break this up. Hopefully things will cancel. So 
what is the nature of the rotating object? Well, it says it's a hoop, all right? If you go to page 359 in your textbook, you'll see the formula for a, a hoop about its center. You're going to have the formula of I is equal to MR squared. So now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna plug in MR squared. Okay, the mass of the, uh, would be the mass of the rotating body multiplied by the radius of that rotating body squared. So this is now just MR squared. Oh my goodness, look what happens. And you might say, I don't know the radius. That's okay, but look, it's beautiful. Look what happens. The radii will cancel, or the radius will cancel because this whole term is squared. So really this is an R squared in the bottom. And this is, a, that's also an R squared, right? So they cancel. So now if you notice, this term is identical to this term, okay, right? This was VF squared times M times one, half, uh, times one half, and so is this. So these two terms are in common, and if I add half plus a half, that equals a whole, right? So MGHI, when I combine this now with this, half plus half cancels, so now what you'll get is you'll just, not cancels, I mean half plus half adds up to one. So MF squared. Now look what else is beautiful. The M's cancel. Oh my goodness. Is it? Look at how simple this formula is now. Isn't it crazy? Okay, that's kind of the beautiful thing about physics. You start with some complexity. I mean, simple ideas, but there, you know, there's many ideas combined, and then all of a sudden you're going to come down to this equation. So now solving this for VF, right, I just got to square root both sides, basically. So VF will then equal square root of G times H. Look at that. So simple. So such a simple equation. I don't mean this problem is simple. But now that's just point, uh, 9.8 times the height of 5, and we have our answer. Could be like a little frustrating, right? You're like, why it's so hard, some problem so hard, but it's such a simple formula. Can't can we just start there or something? No, not exactly. It, it it a lot of it depends on the nature of the question. So you bet it's best to know the expansive um, style and how to solve the problem, and then you simplify it from there. It's better you think globally and then reduce it down to local, depending upon what the question is asking. All right. That will make you that'll make you a better problem solver just in general. All right. Not only in physics, but just in life. All right. Now, enough with my philosophical discussion. 9.8. I can hear you. You're like, all right, yeah, I get it. Sounds great. What's the answer? Um, so the answer here is going to be seven. All right. And if we had to then yeah, it'll be approximately seven. So I guess three sig figs. So seven point zero zero. My calculator spits out exactly seven if you use a little slightly different 9.81 sometimes I see people use but we'll leave it at this so this is going to be meters per second and that is the final answer guys thank you very much for tuning in really do hope this video helped if it did please give us a hand hit that like button hit that subscribe button and also tell your classmates that's actually the biggest uh, way you'd be able to help us grow and uh, you know at the rate at which we grow is directly proportional to how much you guys help so we're trying to help you. If you're able to then help us, that's great. If not, we still love you anyway, um, but it'd be so much appreciated if you're able to. All right, and I look forward to helping you with the next problem. Take care.